how is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Today Quinn's going to be showing you how to make a few music video effects within Premiere. What's up guys? I'm going to walk you through five easy to do editing effects to enhance your music video edit in Premiere Pro. I recently shot and edited a music video for Funk Flex and Rowdy Rebel that actually just hit over 10 million views, which is crazy. And I pretty much used all of these effects in this edit. Super easy to do and can add extra life and dimension to your edit. By the way, you can use this for all types of videos, not just music videos. You can use it for promo videos, product videos, etc. So the first effect is speed ramping. Speed ramping is an incredible way to add movement, add life. It's a great way to highlight certain moments. So here I have two clips of Funk Flex, one hitting the camera and then going up these stairs. So I'm gonna show you how I use speed ramping to add a lot more energy to these two clips and also transition them from one to the other. Ben Haggerty actually did a tutorial on this channel a while back on speed ramping and used this technique. So this is a great way to do it. So you're gonna right click on your clip Scroll all the way down to show clip keyframes and then go under timer mapping and select speed. Now mine's already selected because I've done this already to the clip, um, but you'll click speed, it'll highlight it, and you'll see the this line come up that you can adjust. So this is actually adjusting your speed, right? So if I slowed it down to 20%, you'll see my clip slows down. So you're gonna go ahead and hold down command and you're gonna move your cursor over that line and you'll see this little plus mark come up. This means it's gonna add a keyframe when you press down. And what that's gonna do is allow you to make adjustments on either side of the clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick a point where I want it to speed up and then immediately slow down. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead, hold down command click here and then I'm going to drag this up to the left of it. What you can also do to make this even smoother is go over to your keyframe. You'll see these kind of arrows come up and you can drag to the right or left and that smooths it out even more. So it's more of a gradual build rather than kind of an immediate speed up or slow down. So I'm just going to go here to this side of my keyframe and drag this down to about 20%. I shot this in 120 frames per second, so I can slow it down that much. And as you see, it looks really good. But now I want this clip to transition into this one. To do this, you're gonna add speed ramping at the end and the beginning of those two clips. We'll start here and then right here, I'm happy with it speeding up. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my keyframe there, drag this side of the keyframe up, which is just the rest of my clip and I'll probably want it to cut right about here. So I'm gonna speed it up even more because I want this to be super fast pace. And that actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and figure out where I want my speed ramping to end. So I want it to end right about here. So I'll go ahead, hold down command, click on the line here, and then all this I want to speed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it up and then I'm gonna actually drag this out. I want this to be really smooth and flow really smoothly. So this is a great way to transition scenes, to bring the viewer in and highlight certain moments and to just add more pace to your video. So up next, I have this 3D echo effect, which I think looks really clean. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, so here's my uh, clip that I'm gonna use. First thing I'll do is cut it. I want this effect to kind of pop out. So I'm gonna make a cut and you'll see why in a second, probably about halfway through. So now I'm gonna duplicate these two clips on the layer above. To do that, I'm gonna highlight both, hold down Option, which I believe is Alt on a PC, drag these two clips up, which makes a duplicate on the layer above. And then on these top layer clips, I'm gonna select them, go into my effect controls, bring the opacity down to about 50. And then I'm gonna go into my scale under motion and scale it up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go over to my second clip here and do the same thing, except I'm gonna bring it out even more. So you'll see, which is why I made that cut, so that it kind of pops out a little bit more. And you can do this sort of cut and movement on, on a beat or on a drop. And then we wanna add that sort of 3D color that you saw earlier. So I'm gonna highlight both of these clips, 
do the same thing and duplicate them by holding down option and dragging it to the track above. Then you'll go ahead and select one of your clips and change your opacity mode to color. So once you do that, you're gonna go into your effects panel. And if you don't see your effects panel, you'll go into window and you can select effects right here. And you'll go ahead and type in emboss and you'll drag that onto your top clip. And then under your effects controls, you'll be able to kind of manipulate this. So first thing I'll do is drag up my relief, which you'll start to see brings out that red color. And then you can play around with this however you like. You can change the direction of it. Then I'll go over to my second clip, which I want the same look on. Go ahead, change my opacity to color. And then I can go ahead and add the emboss effect, but I'm actually just gonna copy it from the other clip. So I'm gonna highlight it. Go over to emboss, click it, command C to copy. Go over to my other clip, click it. Go into my effect controls and command V to paste. And so then we get this really cool looking effect. Next up we have directional blur. This effect is great if you want to add some movement or basically create a visual version of like a beat and it's super easy to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. What you're gonna wanna do is go over to your effects panel and type in directional blur, drag it onto your clip. And then you're gonna add keyframes. So I'm gonna figure out where I want these moments to hit. So I'll go ahead and skim through it. And I think we'll do one as his hands coming down. So I'll go ahead and add two keyframes under directional blur for direction and blur length. I'll go forward one frame and then drag out the direction and the blur length till I see fit. Then I'll go ahead, maybe two more frames and then bring this back down to zero. And actually, I kind of want to drag it out a little bit longer. So you'll see that just add some cool movement. And I'll do one maybe right here. So I'll go ahead and add two more keyframes at zero because we want it to come in. Then I'll move ahead a frame and bring up that blur leg. And I can change the direction around too. Move my cursor a few more frames and bring this back down to zero. That should look pretty good. Actually, we'll have it extend out a little bit longer. So this is great to do on beats, but overall it just looks cool and adds a little bit more dimension to your edit. Next up, we have this clone effect, which is also really, really simple to do. Just requires changing some positioning and some blending. Just a heads up, this will only work with dark scenes. Just to keep in mind when you're applying this effect. Here I have my clip, and the first thing I'm gonna do is create a duplicate of this clip on the track above. So I'll select my clip, hold down option, and drag this up above. And then what I'm gonna do is take my duplicated clip and change the blend mode to lighten. And this has created the clone, but we wanna be able to see it. So we're gonna go over to our positioning and drag it out towards the left. And then you'll wanna do the same thing with the other side or depending on how many clones you wanna to make, totally up to you. Uh, but I'll go ahead and drag and duplicate this clip again and then just move the positioning all the way over to the right. So that's how you get that look. And what you can do is make cuts in certain areas to have these clones pop in and pop out however you see fit, which is also something you can do to the beat. If you want it to blend a little bit better, uh, you'll see kind of you have duplicates up top of kind of the background that maybe you don't wanna see as clearly. You can go ahead and select your clips and create a mask. So to do this, you'll go under opacity and you can go ahead and select free draw border. So this I believe is my right clip. So I'll go ahead and just draw a mask around my clip here. You'll see that you kind of erase all that extra background up top. So yeah, this is a really cool and easy effect that you can throw onto any clip.
Also, if you are a creator and you're newly interested in shooting products, we just launched a full product video course where I cover getting clients, shooting, editing, pricing your video. It's a really great way to get a grasp on shooting product content. The link is productvideoschool.com, so feel free to check it out. Up next, we have this time lagging effect, which could be really cool to use on some of your shots. So to achieve this look, you're gonna go over to your effects panel, you're gonna type in echo. This is really simple to do, it's just one effect, which is nice. So once you apply that effect, you'll get this sort of look, which is actually kind of cool if you're going for like a vintage retro kind of VHS look, so you can leave it like that. Or you can go ahead and adjust the effect how you like. So first thing I'm gonna do is adjust the echo time, which basically is delaying the clip a little bit to create this kind of echoey time laggy effect. So this is very sensitive, so you'll wanna move it just a little bit and you'll see in the preview when it moves forward, or back in the clip a little bit. So I'm gonna move it to about 0 0.067 and you can preview it and you can make it even more laggy. So maybe I'll actually make it a little bit more laggy. So I moved it to about 0.167 and that gives me a little bit more of a, a cooler effect. And you can adjust the number of echoes so you can even make two echoes, just adds another layer of delay but I'll just keep it at one. And then you'll see it kind of, since there's multiple layers of the same clip, it's gonna kind of overexpose itself. So we'll wanna crank that down a bit. And to do that, you're gonna go into your starting intensity and just lower it until you see it fits the right exposure. You can also go down to your echo operator and change it to screen, which will make it just blend a little bit better and not look super overexposed. So you'll kind of end up with something like this. And you can do these in little spurts and moments throughout your music video edit. Also a quick bonus tip, if you go and watch the Funk Rowdy video on YouTube, some of these shots have these really cool, bright, starry looking lights. And what I use for that is actually a star filter. So you can put the star filter on your lens. They're cheap, they're inexpensive, and they look really cool when you have a strong, powerful light hitting them. So that's a, just an in-camera tip. If you go out and shoot a music video, you might wanna get one of these. And those are my five easy music video effects that you can apply to your edits in Premiere Pro. Let me know what you guys think. If you end up using any of these effects, send them to me, DM them to me. I'd love to check them out. Hopefully this will level up your edits across all types of videos. Thanks so much for watching. Killed it, Quinn. Shout out to our East Coast, West Coast working setup. You can check out Quinn's personal IG here and her website right here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill. Oh,